Welcome back to my channel. This is a video about the Hasselblad X camera system. And you see here in front of me on the table, the Hasselblad X1D. The X1D Mark II, which is the successor of the X1D, is the most recent camera in that particular lineup. And then you see this camera here, where you will also find a video on my channel, because this is a replica of what Hasselblad calls the first camera on the moon. And it's a very interesting one. So we have a digital back, which is the CFV 250C. We have a very slim camera body here in the middle, which is the 907X, and then we can mount XCD lenses, which are from the X1D camera system, or we could call it the X system from Hasselblad. On my channel, you will find a lot of videos about these cameras and the camera system in general, including the XCD lenses. The most recent I posted was about the standard zoom lens here, 35 millimeter to 75 millimeter. And I should say I use frequently my Hasselblad cameras the X1D by now is more serving as a spare body if I travel with the X1D Mark II, but I also love shooting with the 907X because it's so special and it's a really special experience to shoot that camera with the XCD lenses. In general, the X1D Mark II, which is probably the most common one in the market, plays in the top league of super professional cameras. And the image quality coming from this camera in combination with the XCD lenses is absolutely fantastic. And in particular, the sharpness, the color rendering, I've mentioned this many times on my channel, there's absolutely nothing to complain. Nevertheless, I think there are five major improvements Hasselblad should actually include in the potential successor of the X1D Mark II. And I'm sure there will be a successor because Hasselblad has a very consistent track record in upgrading with new innovations, their camera systems, and there will for sure be a successor. Let's call it as a model name for the time being the X1D Mark III. This video is all about sharing with you what I think should be the top five improvements for the X1D Mark III. And please also post me your comments, what you think. And now let's kick off the video. The first improvement I want to see concerns the electronic shutter and I unmounted the lens here now so we can have a glimpse at this fantastic sensor with this fantastic image quality. And uh, you need electronic shutter for instance if you want to mount a lens on the camera body which is not from Hasselblad. And then the following happens because the shutter mechanism of the X cameras is a leaf shutter. The shutter actually is in the lens. So if the lens is gone we don't have an XCD lens mounted on the camera, then your shutter is gone. So you need to switch to electronic shutter and the electronic shutter then will kick in and will basically help you to release the shot. A second application where many people like to use electronic shutter is if you do time lapses and shoot thousands of frames. And clearly a leaf shutter mechanism in the lens has a better durability than a mechanical shutter in a camera body. But nevertheless, also a leaf shutter has its limits and its final count. And then people like to switch to electronic shutter. And here is now the problem. The readout time of the sensor, according to Hasselblad in the manual of the camera, is 300 milliseconds, and that is super slow. That means you will have rolling shutter effects. And I want to illustrate this quickly by a time-lapse clip, which I recorded with the X1D Mark II. So let's have a look and pay in particular attention to the tram and how it gets distorted in that little time-lapse video. I'm sure you saw the effect of the rolling shutter and that distorted tram which was passing by the camera. And that of course also applies to any situation if you mount another lens which is not from Hasselblad on the camera body because you have the same problem. As soon as you have quicker moving subjects in the scene, they will get distorted based on the super slow readout time of the sensor. And that is of course also connected to the capability of the image processor of the camera. And that's why we need both. We need a sensor with a much faster readout time and we need a better image processor, which is much more speedy and thus avoid the rolling shutter effect when we use the electronic shutter so we can finally use it for all scenes, not only for still scenes. The second improvement I'd like to see concerns autofocus. And autofocus in the Hasselblad X system 
is just super slow. Let's have a look here. You see it typically takes a second, sometimes longer. I could not focus here at infinity because the room is too small and that is just too slow because it should actually focus in fractions of a second. And the larger sensor is not a good excuse for that because Fuji showed with the GFX100S how a good performing autofocus system looks like. And the reason is that Hasselblad relies on contrast detection only, whereas in the Fuji GFX system we have face detection and face detection typically is an excellent recipe for a better performing autofocus. And I think Hasselblad could change that in the next generation of sensors, including face detection points and in this way speeding up autofocus so that you can also use these fantastic cameras for sports and action. The third improvement I'd like to see concerns auto ISO and let me quickly demonstrate what the issue is here. So I'm here currently now in program mode, which is a shooting mode I hardly use, but here I can go for auto ISO and the camera basically figures out what the best ISO value is. And if I push the ISO button here on top, it also gives me in the menu the auto ISO option. The same works in the semi-manual mode. So if I go here from program mode to shutter priority, then I can also use auto ISO. And if I push the button again, you see auto here is an option. I can let the camera figure out what the right ISO value is. And it also works in aperture priority, as you can see here. Still auto is selectable in the ISO menu here. But if I go to fully manual mode, ISO can no longer be shut in autopilot. And that is something which I personally find unfortunate because there are situations where you can think of where you want to have full control over your aperture and over your shutter speed, but you want the camera to figure out what your ISO value is. And I think if you come from classical photography, it is a logical consequence that in manual mode, your ISO should also be figured out manual. But in all other cameras I'm aware of, you can actually also have auto ISO if you are in fully manual mode when it comes to shutter speed and aperture. And that is not possible on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II and in general on the X system. And I think that's just a firmware issue. Hasselblad could offer it because you control with shutter speed your motion blurriness and whether you want to freeze something by going for very fast shutter speed. With your aperture, you basically steer your depth of field and the overall impression of the image but maybe I don't want to carry my shooting what ISO value is the right one and just let the camera figure that out. And that is not possible here, which I think is unfortunate, unnecessary and can be fixed in a firmware update. In order to make a counter example how this could work, let us look again at the Fuji GF X100S, which is I think the best comparison data point for the Hasselblad X system because it has the same sensor size. And if I go here into the Q menu, I see I can here switch in the different auto ISO modes and nevertheless I'm here in my shooting mode on fully manual and that is something Hasselblad could easily implement. So let's put it on the list of things for improvements. Improvement number four concerns the selection of focus fields which are if you're on spot metering also the areas where the camera is metering light and I can quickly demonstrate this here. So if I press and hold the autofocus button I come into the grid mode and then I see here my focus fields. I can also change the size here by pushing that button here. So this is large, this is medium, this is small. In other cameras you have more options but also more autofocus fields. For instance, if I want to repeat that exercise with the GFX100S from Fuji, let's quickly look into that then we get the following. So here's the grid view and then we have, you see this here I can toggle, so this is size number one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have the double number of sizes here available, but we also have significantly more focus points. And we have what I mentioned before, face detection. So it's a completely different autofocus in general. But I don't complain about the size here or the number of focus points. What I don't like is, and I'm going to show now, that the way to move now your focus field is by the control wheel. So this is the vertical direction, for instance. And here on the front wheel, I have the horizontal direction. And if you have your eye on the electronic viewfinder, it becomes very hard to figure out how that works or you have to practice a lot. I typically mix up the directions of change and have difficulties getting this done. You can also use touch, of course. So I can move this by touch, but if the camera is close to my eye, 
touch functionality is not very helpful. And what I would like to see here is a joystick. And Hasselblad actually showed already that the joystick is something they are aware of, namely on the 907X, because here you can mount the hand grip and with the hand grip, you can steer your focus field. Let me quickly illustrate this here on the digital back of the 907X. And you have here the same focus fields. You can also toggle through the different sizes here with kind of the same button. You can also use the control wheels of this optional hand grip to control, for instance, the horizontal direction of your focus field or the vertical direction of your focus field. But you also have a joystick here. And that joystick controls, I think, in a much more intuitive way that focus field, as you can see here. And I would appreciate to have such a joystick right here on the X1D Mark II so that I control it much better if I have the camera close to my eye and don't have to remember all the time which of the wheels, front or rear, is in charge of what and what's the direction of travel if I start to rotate them. Improvement number five and my last one concerns battery life. And I typically get between 200 and 300 shots out of one battery capacity load. And it depends, of course, how often I use my electronic viewfinder, how bright my LCD is. If it is a sunny and bright day, I turn them both more into the brightness area. And then you have less shots in one battery load. And I actually think a battery of this size, like we have it here in the X camera systems, should actually be able to shoot between 350 and 400 images. And that is something which I put on my wish list for a potential successor of the X1D Mark II. Now, summarizing, all three cameras are fantastic. I love shooting them. The image quality coming out of these cameras and the sensors and the lenses is just terrific. No complaints here, but my five improvements, I think, is maybe something worthwhile to think about from the Hasselblad side. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. And of course, peace out.